Happy Shop Day. You might be able to tell we've got a naked Wilma. Don't be pervy. Our truck's name is Wilma if you're new to the channel. Uh, the rooftop tent, the rack, the tonneau cover, and everything about our previous Overland build has now been removed. And it is time for us to start Camp Bedrock 2.0, which will consist of an Atlas, an ATO uh, Atlas cap uh, where you know it pops up and has a tent above. I've mentioned this before, but I'll pop up a picture in case you forget about the kind of the direction we're going. Ultimately, we want this interior bed space to be a little mini van life without actually owning a van. So we're gonna have a whole bunch of projects here and I'm gonna break those up into little individual videos. So what you're gonna have coming is the little shark fin antenna on the top needs to get relocated. That's why we've got the third brake light uh, out up there. And that's because we're gonna have a canopy that goes out over that, so that's gonna have to move. We're gonna be adding in here 200 amp hours of batteries. We've got some Battleborn uh, LiPo 4, two batteries, two of their 100 amp hour batteries. But on the top of our cap, we are gonna have 400 watts of solar. We're also gonna be able to shore charge and charge from the alternator. Hopefully, even though we don't have that much battery storage, having all of the charging mechanisms we're hoping will be able to keep us off grid for as long as we want to be. We're gonna add a little bit more water in here. We got 20 gallons, but we're gonna try to insulate, have a nice floor in here and really get everything going. It doesn't stop there. We're also redoing the interior of the truck. If you've been following or you followed the old Camp Bedrock Build 1, I built a custom shelf in there that had our ARB fridge freezer sort of built up and right between Alana and I when we drove so we could grab snacks and grab jinx, drinks while we were heading down the road. We have a new fridge that as whiskey drinkers, Alana and I are very excited about. We'll be able to make some ice when we're out on the road and that fridge is going to require some modifications to that. But also when we did that, we had decided to keep the 40 seat in the rear. So we had taken the 60 out here recently for more storage and the shelf worked with it. We're gonna rework some of that so we can put some of our tools and some of the things that we wanna keep with us on the road, but we don't necessarily need quick access. We're gonna build up some of that storage and do some other tweaks there. Anyway, all of those things, I'm gonna try to break up into individual build, uh, build videos for the audience on those specific things. This particular video, I'm gonna roll right into the bed and we are gonna get going on insulating and the floor. Here we go. Okay, here's what we have for our floor. We have a half inch foam board that is R3 that we're gonna cut into small strips to put down to fill the voids in the bed. And then we have another half inch foam board that's gonna go on top of that. And then a half inch plywood that's gonna be our base of our flooring that we can attach some things to. And then our flooring for the top that's gonna to be floating, same brand that we had bought for our own house. Hoping that the red will come out to help accent the rest of the accents, match them up for the red for her interior. Well, we ended up last night with a problem and forced into plan B before we even began. Um, so a measurement problem on my part. Earlier, we thought that these indents in the bed were right about a half inch, and that's because I measured incorrectly. Even though I have really good tools to measure it, what I did was I laid this, this tool down sort of in the groove, and then I dropped this down in here uh, at, to get a measurement, but in my haste, Many of you have probably already seen, I added the thickness of the square that I used to sort of knock off a plane here, which added about an eighth inch. So um, we don't have 
a half inch deep groove, it's closer to three eighths. It's actually right about three eighths. And of course the insulation that we got uh, also compounded the issue because while it's supposed to be a half inch nominal, it actually measures over that close to five eighths of an inch at 0.6 inches. So uh, those two things meant that when we went to fill this groove or if we had moved forward to filling these slots to bring the floor level up, uh, it, we were gonna end up with too much insulation. So last night we made another trip to the hardware store and uh, what we ended up getting is this is just a small cutout piece, but basically the, the quarter inch uh, insulation that you use or that you could get uh, to go underneath vinyl siding, like if you were going over wood shake siding or something and you wanted to make the wall flat, they make folding uh, foldable uh, insulation. I'll show you kind of a picture of the way it's shipped. But anyway, it's advertised at a quarter inch, but it's actually measures 0.2. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually stack up two heights in these grooves and that will put it just a little bit proud. We're okay with that. For the most part, it'll add just a wee bit of insulation and it will make the floor more level. My gut tells me the more I play with this, it wants to compress just a little bit more anyway. So I, I really think we'll be okay. If at the end we feel like it's too much, as I mentioned, we've got quite a bit of a kill mat sound deadening material and we could put strips across the high ribs and that would make this a perfectly flat floor. So anyway, before I got to cutting these pieces and strips, I needed to address or build up some of the edges that are weird spots, which pushed me into working on the template. And if you've got like a Toyota Tacoma or a lot of other trucks, this is a lot easier job than it was with the Ram. The reason it was so tricky with the Ram is, and you can probably kind of tell here a little bit, there's a lot of curves and compound angles that play in there. So the higher we build the floor, the tightness actually changes. So we don't have like hard angles where you can just run a stencil. So I did a couple of things here to combat that. First thing I did, which you've seen uh, some, some B-roll on is, I took our solar, one of our solar panel boxes and I opened it up so it fit in the full length of the truck. And I put all of these horizontal stripes in there and that allowed me to do two things. First, I just took a tape measure and I measured all the way down along it and sort of ticked off on those lines. But the other thing it did was I made myself my own little scribe. So I had a scrap piece of trim NDF here and I just rounded the end so that it would slide along the truck and then I made a hole that with a, a little bit of tape, I was able to put this uh, Sharpie marker in here until it just hung out and then I was able to kind of come down and scribe along or scribe out a shape. That actually worked really well and because I already had those little ticks in there from the tape measure, I knew that this thing was kind of working. Now, it's still not perfect though, if I'm honest. And a couple places where it lets you down is, I'm working with a thickness of material here that's a little over a half inch, uh, about three quarters. And what that means is when I've got a hard corner, basically where I started and where I ended, still needed quite a bit of finesse. So in the transitions, it made a really good shape that transferred right away, but not too much, uh, not too much otherwise. So. Um, that worked real well. Then I came back with the uh, a black Sharpie just to, I marked it out with blue with the scribe and I came back with a, what I read. So I pulled it all the way down and again, those horizontal lines let me know that I was staying straight as I scribed, as I scribed that shape out along the bed rail. But then I came back with a black marker to say, I'm reading between a couple of lines here. So I think that that uh, will work okay. Bottom line is we finally got it all cut out. It now works really well. So I've got a template for this side. Of course, all I have to do is flip it over. I have a template for that side. So now it's time for us to start cutting this insulation and getting the first layer down. All right, so the template had worked really pretty well to get the four corners, which has taken us the most amount of time, just sort of jockeying that in there. Because remember, the template started with the base, but because of the curves on the sides and at the wheel well, the more we move up, the wider those pieces can get, right? Because we, in the curve, we kind of keep getting closer and closer. So I really don't think a quarter inch gap here and there for what we're doing is gonna be that big a deal. Regardless, what we have to do now is get all of these slots. So I know this first lower section is right at an inch and a half. So rather than cutting all this and doing each one, I went ahead and set myself up a little bit of a jig with a straight edge here. So I've got a piece of scrap wood down here, which is a stop. And then this is set, these little shims in here are just tall enough to keep my straight edge up above it. So I can go ahead and cut off pieces of this insulation. I think this is gonna make this pretty easy then to bring this in here and I can literally just run this right along real easy. Uh, 
that quickly, I'm hoping, will give me these nice strips of, oops, I missed a section there. I'm hoping this will give me these real nice, uh, consistent strips of inch and a half. So once I get one done, I can kick that out, bring this forward, and just do this over and over and over to make all these pieces, and then we're gonna get that taped down and secured. Well, there you go. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that was a lot more work <laughs> than I anticipated. Both, both just in time, but also labor intensive. Putting the uh, putting the kill mat down and rolling it out. Woo! That's a uh, that uh, that's a little that's a little tiring for an old dog like me. Anyway, bed uh, is perfectly flat. Uh, the styrofoam did end up, or the foam core did end up leaving it just a little proud. So we put the kill mat down, which we had planned anyway, and that is now perfectly flat. So we are finally ready for the green uh, half inch-ish insulation before the plywood. Well, we got the half inch foam board in. Um, no video of it. Pretty self-explanatory. You want to measure a dozen times, cut once um, for cutting. We use the utility knife for a lot of the straight, easy, soft passes on it for the angles and everything. This pneumatic buzzsaw worked great for it. Unfortunately, it makes a big green dust, a lot of it, so you have to kind of wipe everything down. Um, for the gluing, we decided to use the Gorilla Max Strength Construction Adhesive Clear. We actually use that between the pink fan fold pieces and then on top of the fan fold and the kill mat to glue this down onto it. And then we put several items on the top of it to make it flat. Um, we were a little concerned because when we saw this in the store, it was a little wavy. And um, so we were concerned it would stay flat. Looks like it did really well. Uh, we were at a previous store that had Owens Corning brand, which has the Pink Panther on it. You can't miss it. Um, it seemed to be flatter in the store, but unfortunately that store didn't have all of the components that we needed, so we moved on to the next hardware store and ended up with these. I think it worked out just fine. Well, it's plywood time, but before we can do that, we need to make some adjustments to our template. We found that it was really good with all the foam pieces, but now that we've built the floor up, the curve is now greater. So we need to make some adjustments to this before we can start cutting on the plywood. And we really need to get the plywood in soon because the foam dents from our knees and things. So we need to get it protected with the plywood. I think that's going to do it for the flooring or at least part one on our camp bedrock rebuild. As you can see, we did finally get the plywood in. We are missing some hardware to join the front and sections of the plywood together. So we've got to take a pause. And honestly, this was the mission we wanted to get here so we could easily walk in the bed. But also, as we mentioned, everything else from this point is going to, is going to tie in with a combination of the walls and the floor. So we do have some more insulation work to do. Um, once we get completely done on a future part, this is the flooring that's going to ultimately go on in. You've seen it before. It's a, it's frankly a lot better flooring than we intended to get for the truck, but we were worried about scratches. So we went with a better flooring so that we had a thicker mill thickness, that could, a wear layer. We had a thicker wear layer for the flooring. So this is ultimately what will go in vertically on top of it. And if you're sort of looking at it, I know it looks like we really built up a lot here. In fact, we didn't. Remember, everything you're seeing sort of in these pink bumps down here just brought it up to the top of the hump. So we really came up about one and a quarter inches in total, including the floor that we finally got it. So the next thing we're going to move into is our electrical system, uh, or at least part one of that build as well. We needed to get here as well because there's scraps of this plywood that get used in the system. 
In fact, I have a big piece of plywood that's going to go up front, and that's where we're going to mount a lot of those electrical components that we're going to be moving inside to build. We've got a really bitter cold front coming, and I don't think the heat's going to keep up here in the shop. So we are moving inside for that build. Hopefully, you'll follow us along on that. Thanks. If you have questions, let us know in the comments. Bye-bye.